Hello everyone and welcome to today's webinar where we will be discussing cardiac arrest in PALS. Unlike cardiac arrest in adults, which is very common due to acute coronary syndrome, cardiac arrest in pediatrics is more commonly the consequence of respiratory failure or shock. Thus, cardiac arrest can often be avoided if respiratory failure or shock is successfully managed. Less than 10% of the time, cardiac arrest is a consequence of ventricular arrhythmias and occurs suddenly. It may be possible to identify a reversible cause of cardiac arrest and treat it quickly. The reversible causes are essentially the same in children and infants as they are in adults. So the reversible causes include the H's, which is hypovolemia, hypoxia, um, acidosis, hypo or hyperkalemia, hypoglycemia, or hypothermia. The T's include tension, pneumothorax, tamponade, toxins, thrombosis, coronary, thrombosis, pulmonary, or trauma. So to recognize cardiopulmonary failure, follow the ABCDEs. So airway, it may or may not be patent. Breathing, it could be slow breathing or ineffective breathing. Circulation, there may be bradycardia and hypotension, slow capillary refill, weak central pulses in the carotid, no peripheral pulses, radial pulse, or skin mottling, cyanosis, or coolness. For disability, there may be decreases level of consciousness, and for exposure, there could be bleeding. Is there any hypothermia, or is there any trauma? So there are several cardiac arrest rhythms for you to recognize. This includes a systole, pulseless electrical activity or PIA, ventricular fibrillation, which is VFib, or pulseless ventricular tachycardia or VTAC. Pulseless electrical activity or PIA and a systole are related cardiac rhythms in that they are both life-threatening and unshockable. Assistily is the absence of electrical or mechanical cardiac activity and is represented by a flat line ECG. There may be subdural movement away from baseline, um, but there is no perceptible cardiac electrical activity. Make sure that a reading of assistily is not a technical error. Ensure that the cardiac leads are connected, gain is set appro appropriately, and the power is on. Check two different leads to confirm. PIA is only one of any number of ECG waveforms, even sinus rhythm, but without a detectable pulse. PM may be, include any pulseless waveform except VF, VT, or systole. A systole may be preceded by an agonal rhythm. An agonal rhythm is a waveform that is roughly similar to a normal waveform, but occurs in intermittently, slowly, and without a pulse. Ventricular fibrillation, or VF, and pulseless ventricular tachycardia, or VT, are life-threatening cardiac rhythms that result in ineffective ventricular contractions. VF is a rapid quivering of the ventricles instead of a forceful contraction. The ventricular motion of VF is not synchronized with atrial contractions. Pulseless VT occurs when the rapidly contracting ventricles are not pumping blood sufficiently to create a palpable pulse. In both VF and pulseless VT, Persons are not receiving adequate perfusion. VF and pulseless VT are shockable rhythms. So now we're going to go over the cardiac arrest algorithm. So the first step is to activate the emergency response. Then you should begin start p starting CPR, giving oxygen and attaching a monitor in the defibrillator. If the rhythm is a shockable rhythm, that means it's either VF or VT, you're going to go ahead and administer a shock. Then perform CPR for another two minutes. You may need to establish IV or IO access without interrupting CPR. If the rhythm is shockable again, then you're going to go ahead and administer shock again. Perform CPR for another two minutes, and at this point, you may consider delivering epinephrine every three to five minutes or consider an advanced airway and capnography. You continue to check if the rhythm is shockable. Um, and if it is again, then after performing CPR for two minutes, you can consider um, giving them amiodarone and try treating reversible causes. If the rhythm is not shockable, then you're going to perform CPR for two minutes. 
um, establish IV IO access and deliver epinephrine every three to five minutes without interrupting CPR. You can consider an advanced airway. After about two minutes, you're going to, again, check for a shockable rhythm. If it's still not shockable, go ahead and continue performing CPR and look for reversible causes that you can treat. Some other things to know is that when performing CPR, you should perform at a rate of at least 100 to 120 compressions per minute at a compression depth of at least one-third the diameter of the chest. So 1.5 inches in infants and 2 inches in children. You want to minimize interruptions in CPR, and you should try not to overventilate when delivering any breaths. You should rotate the compressor every 2 minutes. If there's no advanced airway, you're going to go ahead and perform CPR at a ratio of 15 to 2 um, compression to ventilation ratio. And if there is an advanced airway, deliver 8 to 10 breaths per minute with continuous chest compressions. For drug therapy, for the epinephrine, the dose would be 0.01 milligrams per kilogram if it's IV or IO, and repeat this every three to five minutes. If there's no IO or IV access, then you can give the endotracheal dose of 0.1 milligrams per kilogram. Don't forget, we offer online PAL certification on our site. We encourage you to become certified as soon as possible, whether that be on your own time in an online course or in an in-classroom setting. You can find a, the link to the description or the link to our course in the description below. So thank you so much for tuning into today's webinar. We hope to catch you the next time.